Just for demonstration purposes, I pulled out my big guns. This is my 5 8 inch angle shader. It's seen better days. But I like the length of the bristles. It holds a lot of water. So I'm going to go ahead into my water bucket. Blot. This is the burnt umber here. Corner load the same way. I picked up a pretty good amount of paint. But I'm going to put it down on the palette. So it doesn't really matter how much I picked up. Because I'm going to leave it there anyway. I'm walking away from it. A little bit. Oh, there's a bloober. And look how much water. You can see the water puddling there. Let me go in a little bit. That's a lot of water. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blot. And come back over. I'm going to get him out of there. I don't know why. Keep working with that. But I feel like... This brush, and I can add more paint, put it down, I'm walking away from it. This brush just holds so much water, I don't have to keep reloading. I can just come back to here and get paint. So I'm going to use that, and we're going to go up here. <clears throat> oh, um, so yeah, this is where the zooming in part is not good for me because I forget. I'm going to set my brush down right next to his little shoulder. That's really dark, but I like it dark. I actually, you know, as I've said, you're going to say it. What am I, guys? A heavy hand. Um, I tend to always do uh, dark rather than light. Um, seems like I am running out of water a little bit. And the chippy choppiness, you can smooth it out. What, see, once you've gone... Once that starts to dry, you can't go back in it. So I, I already, like, I kind of messed that up. So I'm gonna, I'm taking this off because I'm just. This is what you do. Like, if you don't like it or you think that the result isn't your best, that I don't like it. I'm taking it off and I'll do it better the next time. So I'm just using a wet wipe, gently. I'm not even pushing hard. It's gone. All right, so we're going to do that again. I'm just going to show you. I don't know what, what I didn't like. I mean, it was just not moving. It was I, the way I was looking at it. I couldn't see it very well, and then I started playing in it. All right, so I'm corner loading, loading my brush again. I haven't used my big brush in a while. I've been using that 3 8 inch angle brush. So let's see if I can do it this time. And now it's wet. Okay. What isn't bad because it helps it move. Now look, my brush is splitting a little. I don't like that. I'm reloading. I don't know. Something's just not... I haven't used this brush, so let's see. I'm blotting. Corner loading. Ah, oh, this seems good. Okay. I'm getting right up over it this time. And I'm just putting the, um, the paint edge up against the design and pulling the rest along um you know what maybe i'll stop there and try not to be so greedy with my float um gonna mop it because this brush does hold a lot of water so you mop at the water's edge of the float but that looks good i mean i'm just um putting a little shadow behind the gingerbread at the moment so it's kind of just like background Color. But you need all the bristles on the surface. Sorry, my tummy's growling. I just ate. I don't know why. It's doing that. <clears throat> but see, I have a lot of water in my brush, and it is just able to slide all the way around. I like that. I think that turned out pretty good. I mean, it's very subtle. It's not dark at all. And actually, I think it's because when I was showing you how to load the brush, I kept going back, going back. It got, uh, I had a lot more paint in the brush than water. So it was, um, it got a little sticky and it wouldn't move. But anyway, so that's the idea. 
All right, I'm going to go back into a few of the spots now on the um, gingerbread with this color. Um, I think probably right down this edge of his arm would be darker. So we're going to go right here with this color. And just oops, stick my finger in. Because that would be like pretty dark in there, right? Wouldn't it? I don't know. Maybe like up under here. Mm. Like that. Oopsie. Keep hitting my... And then I think I'm just going to put a little bit down this side of the scarf. The over here. But even though I'm using this huge brush, I can do this little area. Because water is over here, not paint. And if there's a little paint, I can knock it back. Just like that. So that looks good. Maybe on top of his head. Because then he'll, he'll just look toasty. He looks like he's a little, you know, like a cookie. Like he's toasty cooked. This is just a darker color. I love burnt sienna. It's like a reddish brown. But this is a chocolatey brown. That looks good. Um, what else? That's good. Let me see on my other ones if I put any. See, you know, there's no shading on the inside of his hand. So we're good. But see how dark like his cheeks end up looking and stuff like that. So we'll do that. Um, do I want to go around the top of them again? I think I do. See, this is the thing. You can decide where you want to add more or it needs more. Just because you've done an area doesn't mean you're done if you feel like it needs to be darkened or something, you know? So, or you'll have a really good float one time and love it. And then the next time it's like really thin or little or not as dark. So... You can always go back and add another layer. See, I like that. That added, it makes it look even. I'm happy with that. I'm leaving it. I'm not even going to. All right, so I think that's it for shading of the gingerbread. Let's see. Float the cheeks with heritage brick. So let's get some heritage brick. It's kind of like a, a brick color, a red brick color. Um... And for the cheeks, just don't over oh, get crazy. Like, don't overpower it, or what I'm trying to say is, um, they don't have to be really dark. That's what I found. I think lighter looks nice. Like, there's just a little bit up against the candy cane here. And, you know, I stuck it in the, in the corner there, so I'm just showing you. All right? Just that hint of a shine of red or heritage brick. Um, so I'm, I'm going to use this big brush, corner loading. See how much water is on my palette? There's water there. And if it's too much, I just blot and come back. Kind of pick it up. I don't want to go into that brown. That's really wet though. Um, hmm. I'm picking up a little more color. Kind of want equal parts water and paint. So if it, you know, if you have more bubbly water, pick up a little more paint. If there's too many bubbles, blot. So let's see what this does. I'm just going to take it and go right down this edge of the candy cane. And I pity pat it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I ha I didn't notice how much I pity patted until I started filming these. Um, I never really realized I did that, um, but I do. So see, there's just a nice pink little shine. That looks great. I'm going to do the same thing, except for I'm going to kind of pull it out of this corner here. And I'm just going to go right back into that area that I just was in. And... 
see if I can stick the tip of the brush in that area and kind of fill that in. And then I'm kind of walking up the side. This is a difficult shape to get. Um, it's coming. It's coming out like I did it, but a beginner might have a hard time doing that. But that's good. It's just a little shine coming out of there, right? All right, good. Um, paint the eyes and the dots on the chest. I didn't even know there were dots on the chest. Oh, I'm reading the wrong. No, I'm not. Oh, on the cheeks. Duh. Let's see. All right. Why isn't it telling me um, what the icing? There we go. Paint the icing. Dot the highlights on the cheeks and eyes with buttermilk. But let's go ahead and get the black and we'll put the eyes on first. I always shake my paint up, guys. Make sure you mix whatever's in here together. Because otherwise it's not as, as good. Okay, I'm going to use one of my little detailer brushes. This is actually a number one round. Go into the water. And then... Get a little slicker wetter puddle right next to that. Load my brush, all the bristles. And he's got these, see I'm referring now to my tracing or my um, drawing line drawing which is right next to me. Because you could trace these on if you really want to. Um, but I'm just going to wing it and kind of pull one down this way and one down this way. It's a cookie. We don't need to be, you know, too exact. That's the thing. Okay, so they're good. I like those eyes. He also has the little eyebrows and eyelashes, and that's why I got my little real thin. There's probably fewer hairs in this type of a brush. I don't know, but I'm going to get add it to water, go over to my black, and really get that wet like ink. And so I can give her a couple eyelashes. And they're, they're dark. I mean, they're thick. They're not as thin as I'd hoped. But it's a cookie. Doesn't matter. I love her eyebrows, though. She always makes them going like that. Like, huh? So cute. Then it said to put... Um, <sighs> Icing lines, highlights on the cheeks, and eyes with buttermilk. So I'm grabbing my buttermilk. Shake it up. Shake it off. Shake it off. Put it on. It's running out. Sorry. But okay. Now for this, you definitely want the brush. I'm um, sorry, not the brush. The paint wet. You want it. The consistency of ink. So... We're going to take some water, like I just took that script liner, go into my water and then just take it right to here and the water just drops right off the bristle. And you can make a little puddlier or um, waterier puddle right next to the paint puddle. Because if you go right to the, the piece with just straight paint, it's, it's sticky, it's gloppy, it's not going to move. So that use the water there you know there are mediums out there that people mix with the paint to get it to do what they want but water works for me um that's the way i learned and so that's what i'm telling you but there are mediums out there that they sell to get um the paint to move so all right maybe we should have done this before uh the eyes but and i'm pushing pick up push pick up because that makes that thick thin line push mine I don't love this where I connected but I'll fix it I will fix it guaranteed I don't like it I fix it and then she he has one right down his hand So kind of, I'm looking at the picture, at the drawing, and then I go from there. But it's not, you know, exact, obviously. 
if it is shaped a little different or fatter or thinner, it doesn't matter. It's icing. It's my gingerbread cookie. There it is, okay? So look at how cute it starts to come together when you add those details. Take that same brush. Now I've just rinsed it. You heard me rinsing it. I'm just going to go into that buttermilk paint with the tip of that brush. And I have it right on the tip there. And I'm just going to touch down very lightly on the tops of his eyes to give him a little highlight. And then what else did she say? Oh, the cheeks. So I think I'm going to use my stylus. I'm going to get my fatter stylus. I have a one with a couple of different size balls on it. I like this one. So now to do a dip dot, and this with white paint isn't going to show up very well, but um, usually you go into the paint and right to the piece. Dip, dot. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, this might be a little big, but I'm going to go here first, and then I'll go to my piece. And I'll put a little dot right there, and then dip it off and do a little dot right there. So that's the cheeks. What else? Paint the pine sprigs with Hauser dark green. So where's my Hauser dark green? Right here. And shake it up. <coughs> I'm glad my voice is doing good. Because I just wanted to get this video done. Because I'm going to be doing clay soon. I'm getting that brush again, that nice script liner because I want these lines nice and thin to make this. Oh, this is the number one. I want the script liner. And I'm coming in with that, watch, the drip. It's going, it went right into that paint. And I'm pulling it over and making this wet. Maybe a little too much water. We'll find out when we go to the piece. If it looks see-through, it's too wet. But this looks pretty good. So we're going to make, um, what are they called? Pine, pine needles? Okay. So again, I didn't trace these on, but I'm referencing the picture next to me. I'm just putting them kind of sort of where she has them. That's all. I'm not being exact. Um, I'm going to turn my piece. Mm, I think she's got one coming kind of out from here. And you just gently add spriggles. I call them spriggles. I don't know why. They're not spriggles. Um, and don't, you know, she doesn't have you highlighting or, or doing anything with these. I think I did put highlights on my other ones, but you don't have to. Um, she's got one kind of coming out like this and I'm trying to get right over the piece so I can see what I'm doing that looks good and then she's got one kind of going like this I don't know I think I did it completely backwards from actually how she has it there's going to be like three little um, berries in the middle of that. But I think that's it. Let's see. Um, dot a tiny highlight dot. Oh, oh. Dot the center. Three berries with um, country red. You know what? I might as well because we're, we're staying out of it enough. So and I had the country red out from when I based in the stripes. But like look at the stripes. They look opaque enough, don't they? I think so. I'm going to just dip dot these berries. I'm going right into that red. One, two, three, and that's it. So it's like a little hairdo. Her designs are so sweet, Renee. Um, if you want to, you can add a little more. I'm going to go ahead and just darken. I'm going to put one more coat of red on that, and then I'll be back. Okay, so we're looking really cute. We're going to go and do the scarf now. So I got out um, Deep Midnight Blue. That's what we're going to shade with, and we're going to do a brush mix for the highlight. But we're going to go, I'm going to go back to that little brush, my 3 8 inch angle for this, and just load it up with some um, 
deep midnight blue. I'm going to I'll show you um, loading the brush again. And I just refer to the picture for where she wants you to float um, to shade. But one of the places is behind this fold. You see, oh, hold on, getting the shot there. So over here on the left of the middle line, up against this side of the scarf, up against that side of the scarf, up against the candy cane. So I'm going to do that. Um, put the color up against that line and just leave it. Stick it at the top and leave it. That looks good. I'm not even going to mop it. I'm going to go to the center. I have plenty of paint on my brush. I could just tell. And I'm going to pull that down. The center of the scarf. Want to stay away from that now. Don't keep puddle, piddling in where you've done because you'll pick it up. So I'm up against this side of the candy cane. It's a little crooked. I went on to the white a little bit right here. I'm just being picky. Being very picky. All right. Then all up in this, up in here, I would say both sides of this candy cane up here and so all the way around. All right, let's load the brush. You go into the water. Blot. Let the water come out of the bristles. Corner load into that deep midnight blue and load the brush. The more I've been using this, I'm blotting a little bit. I had a lot of water, but I'm getting used to this littler brush now, um, the 3 8 inch angle. A half inch is really good too. All right, so now we're ready to go to the piece. I'm going to go down this side of the candy, oop, better go down here, hold on, sorry. This side of the candy cane. And I'm going back to my palette, I just felt like I wanted more color. This side of the scarf. See how it starts to take shape? So floating is very important. It's a very important technique. Um, without it, you're going to struggle, honestly. It's just a big part of this type of um, painting. You know what we're going to do? This little um, area right up next to the neck, right in here. Let's see. I'll go like that. And then down the other side of this candy cane over here. I like to park the water line if that's, I just pull it and park that water line right up against that line. And that way it, it hides it. Mm, a little bit over here I'll show you. Hopefully I'm not going to run into where I just did. But right here to make it have a little fold there. And this isn't dark enough. We're going to highlight too, so I don't need to. I keep, it's just maybe and me again. Then this gets a line right here. And I think that can be considered good. 
for the shading. And then for highlighting, we're going to take the blue, the base coat color that we used, which is um, French gray blue, French blue, French gray blue. And I'm going to get that on my brush. So I'm going to go here, get the French gray blue, a little bit more, it's a little dried out. Put it down. Then go get some of that flesh tan, which it's she calls it sand. And I'm going right into that puddle and I'm brush mixing it. That's what's called brush mixing. So it's just making it a little lighter. I'm going to rinse my brush though because it's not good. I'm going to rinse my brush and now I'll come back and load into this paint that I made. And we're going to go like probably kind of opposite where we just went. So because I shaded down that side, I'm going to highlight down this side. I should have done this first. I should have done that first. Anywho, because then I now I'm chancing um, pulling it off. I'm going to go down here. I don't know. I think that's it. I might have done a little bit here before, but you don't need it. It's good. There's going to be a bow there and stuff. I'm just going to try and squeeze this over here. Yeah, I did it. So that just made it pop even more. Now there's like these little X's and um, I think they're in Payne's Gray, so I'm grabbing that. Paint. The small X's are with Payne's Gray, so I shook that up. I'm getting that nice little brush again, the detailer. This is actually my script liner, not my detailer. Getting it. I put water in the paint and I'm turning it into ink. And I'm just using her line drawing as a reference and I'm just going to literally like just go around here and put a couple X's like, you know, wherever I feel like it. Kind of. Just I am following her design. I like to cheat. I don't want to think about it. It helps me if I'm not thinking about those types of things. Um, it makes it more relaxing for me. So that's why I like this type of painting be with a pattern and she's already thought everything through for me. I don't have to think of anything. She's talked, she's designed this whole thing. So I find that nice, relaxing. Um, there's a big snowflake on there as well, and that is done with buttermilk. And that's the color we used up here to do the icing and all that stuff. So I'm just going to use that puddle that I have on my palette, that same brush. Just get it wet again. Make sure everything's still nice and juicy over here. Because the air dries out the paint. So you want to make sure it's still moving. Yep, that's still good. Um, and again, I'm just, I didn't trace it on. If you want to, trace it on. Trace this, trace it on. Make it as easy as you need it to be. And I'm just going to go like this. And, um, hold on. I've done this every other time. I don't know why I'm panicking now. Okay. Because I knew the cross was like off center. It's not like a centered cross. And then the X's are kind of. Once you get that part done, it's easier. All right, so that's that. And then I just added dip dots with my stylus. So I'm going into. Like, if you still have a puddle that's kind of juicy, it has to be nice, thick, juicy paint to make a nice dip dot. Like, if it's flat or watered down it doesn't make it as nice so um, you could put a fresh puddle out if you need to but I'm just gonna do it 